Taurans, and here is your horoscope for August of 2020, where this month, Taurus, we are called to look a little bit at our eccentricities, but also this month, Uranus is going to take a retrograde in your sign, so this is your call to freedom and i'll tell you all about that in just a minute first of all coming up in august the eat and greets are fire there is still lots of good stuff going on in the playlist if you haven't had a chance to catch up but this month we're bringing even more astrologers to the table we'll have glenn mitchell Kathy Rose is coming. Kay Taylor is coming from the OPA um, Association, as well Susan Miller will be here, and surely you know of her horoscopes and all of that good stuff. As well, we'll have Laura Nelbandian. And if you know anything about Norwalk, or if you've ever been to Norwalk, you know about Laura, but she'll be here to teach and talk with us as well. So really a delicious month of continued learning. As well, this month, the 7th through the 9th, I will be a part of the Astrology for Purpose and Power Summit. You can sign up for that. It is absolutely free check it out in the description box down below and I would love to see you at that summit I mean 18 different astrologers showing up to talk to you about how to use astrology in your life how do you use it to empower yourself and if you are new to astrology you've been studying for a thousand years whatever your story is this is one of those cool summits where you just get to come and fill up the tank be a little bit inspired feel empowered and leave the summit through the weekend being like yeah all right, let's do this life. So I think it'll be a really good time. Check it out, get signed up. It's free in the description box down below. All right, Taurus, as we come into this month on the third, we're starting off with a full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius. Now this is gonna light up that tip top of your chart. So we've got the 10th house, career, your reputation, what we know you as in public. And this is also your soul level calling. Like what do you have to give? What do you have to offer here? The full moon is saying what needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. It is shining a big old span of light on your career life and saying, where do we need to adjust? Where do we need to accept something about this area? And furthermore, where do we need to take on this air of maybe doing something a little bit different? Taurus, I know I am a Taurus too. We like the way we do things, but this full moon is like, okay, break out. Let's innovate just a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe take a little set of unconventional behaviors and apply them to what we've got going on and see if we can expand from there. Aquarius is also an energy that typically rules a lot of technology. So you may find Taurus this month that this is a full moon saying, where are you at in technology? Do you need to adjust? Do you need to address something in that area? It's absolutely beautiful. Now on the fifth, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Leo. So this is going to light up your fourth house space. Okay, fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, your foundations, your psychological foundations as well sit here. As Mercury moves here, we bring the mouth and the mind to this very brave, big, fiery energy. So you'll want to express yourself. And the way that you're wanting to express yourself may be in your house, right? Maybe you feel like you have to make a lot of decisions right now. You have ideas about what you'd like in this area of your life and you're having to speak to them. Now on a more mundane level, truly, because the fourth house can have to do with parents, you may be signing paperwork, making decisions, um, going over conversations with the parents or things from the past. It can definitely be a time where Mercury shows up with pen to paper and you're needing to make decisions like that in some way, shape or form as well. Now, Mercury is also an energy of travel. So for some of you, you may be doing a short travel home in some way, shape or form, depending on what that looks like for you. Now, on the 7th, we see Venus moving into the energy of Cancer, so moving out of that beautiful money realm for you, but now moving into the space of the intellect, the mind, communication, okay? Venus coming into the energy of Cancer. First of all, she's very comfortable here. She likes being in Cancer. They're just like, let's have a hug and a snack and just make sure we're nurtured and we feel good, right? So what's happening as Venus comes here is she's literally beautifying your mouth. It's like you are giving nourishment with your voice. How brilliant and beautiful is that? But she's also going to draw your mind and your magnetism to things of the mind. Studying. Um, maybe you're writing that book. Maybe you're beautifying that website. It can definitely be a time if you've got contracts, paperwork, negotiations, things like that going on. Venus is bringing a harmony and a diplomacy to this area, making it very magnetic for the good stuff, for the good of the contract. So you could be looking at something like that as well. Now, yep, I'm seeing it. Okay, somebody's buying a house. Go ahead. 
buy your house. Just make sure you have double sets of eyes on the contracts that you're signing and the deals that you're making, but you're totally in the clear to buy that house. On the 15th, we see Uranus taking this retrograde, and this is so powerful for you, Taurus. It's in your first house. Now, as Uranus is retrograde, it's saying, let's go back. Now, you're going back over you, Taurus, you, who you've been, how you show up, how you have been seen in the world, right? Your identity right here. And what Uranus is asking you to do is to look at what you need to do to be free. What do you need to do to be sharing your unique voice, your unique special sauce, but to the people, right? In a way that helps your community. Where do you get to adjust and become this leader because you go back and see what you don't need to hold on to anymore because it's not making you free? One of the things I think of too, Taurus, just because we're of love and money, my friends, is where do you need to be free financially? Where do you need to get on a plan, get on a track, maybe innovate, do something a little bit different so that you can have the financial freedom to do what you want to do, go where you want to go, right? In your relationships, where is forgiveness being called to the table because you can't keep it, it's too heavy, it is not allowing you to be free. So some of this could even be that all you're having to do is go back in and take the phrase with you, where can I simplify? Simplify equals freedom. On the 19th, we've got the new moon happening in the energy of Leo. So the fourth house is lit. It is going. The new moon's where we're going to plant these seeds of intention over the next four weeks. And self-confidence, right? Standing in your full power of your home. And the first home you have is here, Taurus. So in your body, have you been taking care of your body? Are you good at home, right? This voice of Leo wants to express, but it is grand. It is generous. It is self-confident. And this new moon is like, let's plant these seeds of intention to be really good in our own home. But this also includes your home. You could definitely have that move coming underway or some change to your housing situation could be coming up here. When the sun and the moon or together absolutely anything's possible in this home zone so if your parents have needed your attention if you've needed to sign that new lease whatever it is in the home zone including something psychological this moon is giving you a boost of creativity it's giving you a boost of joy to say let's bring something good to this particular area and let's definitely plant something new even if you don't know exactly what it is so that we can watch it come out over the next four weeks on the 20th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Virgo. So he's moved on from Leo, right? It's not, it's not that big, fiery voice anymore. Now we're moving into a fellow Earth energy into Virgo. So this is going to light up your fifth house zone. Children, conception, the beginning of new things, joy, self-expression. All of these things live in the fifth house. True love, romance, desire live here in the fifth house. And we're going to do this like a Virgo. Mercury is very comfortable in Virgo as it rules Virgo in the first place. So now you could be applying a lot of critical thinking or a lot of details to the things in this particular area. This is great if you are starting a new business or you're taking your business in a different direction. This is phenomenal because it's going to say, hey, here are the details of what we need to do to get that done. If you are doing back to school shopping for those children, right? It's going to help you get through that list and see what they need. It's going to help you set up those online classes and help them. It's going to help you with daycare. It's going to help you figure out in a very Here's the step-by-step -step way to get this done routine, how to get this area of your life organized and have it be the best that it can be. Now on the 22nd, we are also going to have the sun entering into the energy of Virgo. So this is your opportunity over the next 30 days to use this big old sun energy to get organized, to get on what the new track of the daily routine will be going from August moving forward. For many of you truly fifth house who have children or are in certain in industries where August brings a shift, this is going to help you set that new routine and have it be the highest level, high integrity. Oh, somebody is 
make those children appointments, do the appointments, whether it's you or the kids, do those doctor's appointments. If it's time for a dental appointment, make sure health Virgo is on tip top as well in this particular area. Okay, man, it's going to be a good month, but I think you're called to look at what makes you you, what's bringing you freedom so that you can travel fast, travel light, travel efficiently as we move throughout August Taurus. And I look forward to walking through all of August with you and bringing some friends over to do it with you as well. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, check out those eat and greets. I'd love to see you at the Summit, the Astrology for Power and Purpose, August 7th through the 9th. Sign up for free in the description box down below. And if there's anybody else you would love to see come to the eat and greets, please put them in the description box or in the comment section, excuse me, down below. I love you guys. I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.